Hi everyone, I'm Johan. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Google Product Manager interview process. At the end of this video, you should have a good understanding of the process itself, what interviewers look at, and a bunch of tips for each round. Quick intro, I'm from Prepfully. This video has been put together by Google PMs who are also interview coaches on Prepfully. They've coached hundreds of candidates successfully and are available on the website for direct booking if you're looking for more personalized guidance. Right then, moving on to the interview. The Google PM interview process has three rounds, phone screen with a recruiter, phone call with a product manager, and the on-site interview. Let's discuss first the phone screen with the recruiter. In this first round, you'll have a 30 minute call with a recruiter who will assess your qualifications and determine which PM level you should be interviewed for. It usually begins with the, so tell me about yourself prompt. So make sure you have a crisp and concise overview of yourself and your professional journey ready. Second, have a clear reason for why you're applying at Google, as well as why you think you'd succeed there. Third, you can expect a mix of behavioral questions and inquiries about your background. So make sure you gather your thoughts about your previous work experiences and decide ahead which specific projects you will discuss. Focus on topics like what your contribution was, how things went, and what you could have done better. It's really important to prepare for this because these questions are going to be how your recruiter determines the appropriate level you will be interviewing for. Further down, this also meaningfully affects your interview panel. For instance, if you're interviewing for an L6 role, then you need to have at least a few L7 interviewers to assess you. If you're unsure which level you're interviewing for, but do have an opinion, we would recommend just asking your recruiter so there are no surprises near the end of the process. Next round is the phone call with a product manager, which lasts around 45 minutes to an hour and focuses on evaluating a breadth of product skills. You can expect one of two formats. The first format is roughly 15 to 20 minutes spent on three questions, usually a bit of product design, some analytical and some behavioral. This is the most common format. Product strategy is rare in this round. The questions often flow into one another. For instance, a recent candidate was asked how they diagnose the underlying cause of a drop-off in ad revenue from search as their first question. An analytical one followed up by how search ads could be improved for restaurants, which is more of a product design question. The interview wrapped up with a bit of discussion on which teams the candidate would be the most excited about, given their background, so some behavioral stuff. The second format is about 30 to 40 minutes on one primary question and the rest of the time on behavioral. This is very often a product design question and replicates a similar interview to the on-site loop. Rarer is a product strategy question. The remaining time often goes into a few behavioral questions. Our biggest tip for this round is to practice multiple times for this. As you can imagine, there is a ton of ground to cover and it's important to give your interviewer enough evidence that you've got the basics nailed down for them to give you a higher score and recommend you for the on-site round. It's basically a single point of failure in your process. So if you want to make sure you're ready, we recommend booking a phone screen style mock interview with a Google PM on Prepfully. We have several group PMs and L6, L7 level PMs from Google on the platform, so you'll get the advice from the soundest possible source. This brings us to the final round, a series of on-site interviews. Typically, there are five rounds. Here's a breakdown of what each round broadly encompasses. Number one, the product design interview. This focuses on assessing your product intuition and ability to solve a problem or pain point for a very specific user. You typically get a broad open question, such as design a variation of YouTube for school kids, and you'd be expected to dive deeply into the persona you're optimizing for, their needs and underlying pain points, prioritize within these and propose solutions you can tie back to them before thinking of how you'd measure progress or learn from your effort. Number two, the product strategy interview, where you'll be tested on your ability to build out a product strategy. Questions may include scenarios like, you're a PM at Twitter, what is your three year strategy for the company? Or should Google look to expand into ride sharing? They're meant to see how you approach a broad abstract topic in a structured way and how you break down the complexity into a set of steps where you can take your interviewer along the journey. 
The important thing here is to make sure you cover all of the important angles, market or industry, competition, internal and external dynamics, customers, etc. when thinking about the long term, but also to do it in a structured way so you can weave a narrative around your recommendation. Number three, the analytical sense round, where your analytical and problem solving skills are tested. The most common type of question here is to break down a problem into its contributory elements and diagnose a root cause. So, Something like ads revenue sank by 6% yesterday and you need to figure out what caused this. How would you go about it? Another common question in this interview type is either a market sizing or estimation question. For instance, estimate the number of lights turned on at 8pm in San Francisco. The goal here is to see if you can think of what considerations to evaluate, and how you can narrow down the possibilities, make logical assumptions and come up with a pragmatic solution. Number four is the craft and execution style interviews, which includes a mix of product strategy and analytical questions, which focus on day-to-day -day work. For instance, small pragmatic trade-offs, or how you work with cross-functional stakeholders and drive agreement, or how you use data to troubleshoot. For instance, orders went up, cancellations also went up, what would you do next? Or your DS has identified a large untapped opportunity. For instance, orders went up, but cancellations also went up. What would you do next? Or your DS has identified a large untapped opportunity, but which will require your team to pivot almost entirely its focus. How would you navigate this situation? The idea is to show that you can work with your key stakeholders in the day-to-day -day conversations you'd be having with them, but driving home impact and value as a PM. Finally, number five, the behavioral Googliness and leadership interview, which explores your behavioral competencies fit within Google's culture and leadership's potential. You can expect broad questions like, why do you want to work at Google? But also those which delve into depth into how you've navigated tricky situations in the past. Can you work with cross-functional teams? Can you demonstrate leadership with influence rather than authority? Can you handle conflict and influence senior stakeholders? These are all things your interviewer is trying to evaluate. Here are three tips for the on-site interviews. For the product strategy, design and analyst round that typically include a hypothetical scenario, follow a structured approach. Make sure to think customer first, since this is something Google filters explicitly for. Also, make sure to think big rather than small incremental iterations. Google's looking for people who are comfortable dreaming about the next moonshot. For the Googliness and leadership rounds, align your responses with values and experience that resonate with Google's principles. It's, a good, pract it's good practice to follow a structured approach like using the STAR method to clearly explain the situation or challenge you faced. Describe the tasks or actions you took to address it and share the results or impact of your actions. Finally, and I mentioned this earlier too, practice a lot. Just being ready with the content isn't enough. You need to brace yourself for an interview environment where you could get asked something unexpected or where the interview might go down a tangent you thought was unimportant, but it's all the interviewer seems to care about and where at the end of the day, you've got 45 minutes to cover an enormous amount of territory where you need to answer all these questions in a way that they adequately demonstrate the full range of your competence and fit. So practice is key. Ask friends for help or go to a professional platform like Prepfully to get practice with any one of the Google TPMs who have been mentoring hundreds of candidates. Right, that's all from us. Lots of additional helpful resources in the description. Don't forget to check them out. And if you found the video helpful, do like and subscribe. Thanks and good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.